Hey everyone! Some of you may have seen on Instagram stories yesterday that I was at the new hourglass counter at Tang's Orchard. I picked up a couple of goodies including Vanish Stick Foundation which I haven't tried. It's been out for so long, it's been raved about by so many people and I just never tried it. And then I also couldn't resist this beautiful thing. This is the Ambient Edit Unlocked palette. The Ambient Edit 4, the one with the pretty pink pastel case, is coming out mid-November, but this is the one that's available now, and there's a sort of like a worldwide shortage of stock for this. Within Asia, Singapore, the tanks counter is the only place that still has stock for this, so if you missed your chance to get it online and everything, you might want to go drop by the tanks counter before it's all gone. Some of you were asking for a small feature or tutorial on how I would use this palette, so uh, I've done that today, and I'll also be testing this on camera for you. Now just a quick overview of the palette, I'm holding it upside down by the way. The top left two shades are the finishing powders, so a bit like your regular ambient lighting powders, they sort of give a different lighting effect in your face. Below that are the two blush shades, obviously you just pop these on your cheeks, mix them, use them alone, whichever, and then you have a highlight shade and a bronzer shade. These are slightly shimmery, and then the two finishing powders tend to go on more matte. A quick note on the shades, um, I feel that this is a palette that's probably better suited to sort of medium-ish skin tones. If you are much darker than that, I feel you're not going to get as much out of this palette because you may not be able to get a visible bronzing effect or to contour with this palette. So most of these would just be blush and highlight shades. A trick for getting this or any of the palettes to work for you is don't look at all the shades individually. So if you have a medium skin, you can use this to highlight, you can use this a little bit as contour, or you can mix these two as a setting or finishing powder for the whole of your face. If you want to do a warm look, use this. If you want to do a cool look, you can use this blush. But if you're doing neutrals, you can also mix both of these so you get sort of a neutral toned flush on your cheeks, which is something I always do. But if you have a medium to tan skin and you want to contour, you can either just use this or mix both of these to get the effect you want. If you're extremely pale, you can tap your brush into the blushes and then into the paler finishing powder just to get a softer tone as well. So think a little bit about how you can combine colours. You can even just swirl your entire brush in everything just for an all of a glow. There's absolutely no reason why you need to stick with the individual shades. This rings in at $140 a pop, so it is obviously not a necessity. This is a luxury item. You probably don't need this if you already have other ambient edit palettes. If you're a collector and you're in the market to pamper yourself, then this is it's a gorgeous, gorgeous buy. I'm going to insert a short clip of these swatches so you can compare the textures. You can see the finishing powders are a little bit more matte, and then the other powders have a little bit more of a shimmer to them. I do have several of the Hourglass products here with me right now, so I figured I'd just use all of them in one video and give you a sort of a brand overview. The Vanish Stick Foundation in the shade Buff. Yesterday, uh, when Vanessa Eccles, the global artistry trainer of Hourglass, was doing a demo for us, you're not supposed to war paint it on. She pretty much did like little triangular dots all over the face, and then you just use your buffing brush or sponge to buff it in. I was between shades. The team did mention to me that this doesn't oxidize, so you want to go with a true match for your complexion and not one shade lighter. The one I have is buff. But I'm really not having to use a lot of this. I think what it is, is it's buildable coverage or it's flexible coverage. So if you want a very natural look, just do a few dots. Don't go in really heavy. What is really nice is that the glow isn't gone from my skin, but it doesn't feel tacky or greasy. It's not like one of those greasy paint sticks. But you can see, you can get really full coverage if you layer it. cover my little spot scars. I 
But this self-setting texture reminds me a little bit of the YSL stick foundation which I also love. Except this one is much more pigmented, so while with that one sometimes you do need to build up a little bit more and add some concealer, this one is extremely high coverage. The odd thing is, it leaves a glow on the skin which just blows my mind because it just isn't making sense. It's setting to a dry touch finish, but I look like I have a slight sheen on my skin. Can you see that? It's so weird. Here's the dilemma. I have the Veil Translucent Setting Powder and the Ambient Edit Unlocked. So what am I going to set with? Okay, I'm going to be a traditionalist. Traditionally, setting powders are here to just lock down your makeup. They don't change the look or feel of your foundation too much other than to matte it down slightly. And finishing powders, on the other hand, play with light. They have reflective particles or colored particles to help create the illusion of a, either a, you know, a more glowy complexion, a color correct, neutralize flaws, change texture and all that. So I'm going to use one of the brushes. Here's the small end of the brush. I'm just going to set the inner cheek and under eye area as usual. Not with too much product. I don't want to take away that glow. I don't typically powder my nose this much, but I have some concealing there, so I kind of have to do it until the mark goes away. My skin looks filtered right now. I'm gonna go in with this as a finishing powder just to brighten up and change the texture of my face and then after that I'll just do some contour. So I'm gonna go in with a mix of the bronzer and the deeper finishing powder just to try and contour and color in the outsides of my face. Oh, color! Okay, you need to be a little bit more light-handed with the bronzer shade. I'm gonna use the deeper finishing powder to just soften up the color. The colors can build up, so go with a light hand. We don't want this to happen. Okay, I'm gonna just go in with this on the other side of my face to see how much pigmentation it has. Oh, it does have some. Okay. Definitely should not have gone in with that much bronzer. Bit just to even out both sides since I applied some on the other side of my face. I'm gonna add back a little tiny little bit of foundation where the concealing has come off. And you will see if it blends on top of the powders. Hmm, it works fine. You know, sometimes trying to apply more on top of powder can be a disaster. This seems to melt right in. There's no caking up or anything. Let me try here. Whoa. Okay, this stick foundation is going in my bag. Right after this video, I am not kidding. I'm applying it on top, two layers of powder, and it's just melting right in. It's not picking up, it's not grabbing in lines. Why have I waited so long to try this? I think I'm gonna do a warmish look today. Oh, it's so pretty! It's that kind of soft, corally shade that reminds me very much of 
nice orgasm. Maybe slightly warmer. My skin still looks glowy on camera, but it's completely dry to the touch. There's zero tackiness. It's, it feels very matte. I hear this was a limited edition shade that they came out with a while ago and then it's no longer available but they popped it into this palette so if you love that shade I'm gonna go with my finger because I think it just melts it into the skin Oh, oh look at that! I know many of you find the ambient lighting highlight powders to be a little bit too sparkly sometimes because of the larger pro pigments in them. Try swiping them on with a finger. You get more of a glisten. You'll still see some of the sparkly pigments in there, but it will sort of sink into the skin a little bit better and hug your contours. Now this is something I keep forgetting to mention, but if you love warm neutral sort of fall colours and you are on a budget, go and get this. Go and check this out. Um, it's cruelty free and I believe the new formulas are also carbon free. And look at the colours. The thing about Julius Place eyeshadows is they are extremely pigmented. These remind me a little bit of the um, old Makeup Forever single shadows that was so expensive. One of those pans would cost about the same as the entire palette. I'm not joking. Look at that. The only problem with this palette is the shades are not named, so I kind of have to just keep pointing around. The eye socket is here, but after applying my shadows here, I'll always blend them up because it widens your eye, creates the optical illusion of your eye area being much bigger. This is like contouring your cheekbones. So you apply it in the hollow and then you blend upwards. Because what you're trying to do is lift your features. some fallout so just be careful. Golden points. This is a show and we're a limited edition colour that they launched, I think, last year or the year before. It's part of their Super Mario's collection. It is the cutest thing in the world. Definitely try one of these, but get it at the end of the year when holiday releases come out.
And I want the Draw My Mama lashes to go with the Draw My Mama eyeshadow. I really like how the skin looks and feels. Like I'm not getting all that wrinkly, dry texture under my eyes. Plus the foundation stick doesn't grab onto powder. See, it's still layering perfectly on top of multiple layers of powder and foundation. Yeah, this is so going in my bag right now. I think the difference between this and the YSL is it really, really takes so little product with this. Uh, with the YSL, I remember from just the first use, a few swipes on my face, the imprint on the top was already completely gone, meaning I'd gone through maybe like one millimeter of product. This one looks like it's been hardly touched because you really don't need very much of it at all. Remember to dot rather than draw stripes because all you'll do is end up just blending everything away and it's all in your brush, it's all in your sponge. This isn't cheap, so don't do that. I think I'm really loving how the skin looks today. And I've layered and layered on more of this under the eyes, on top of powder and it just sinks right in, blends right in, sits nicely, it's not grabbing any of the powder. I'm not getting those wrinkly lines under the eyes. Okay, I get the hype. As for this, well, it's uh, it's not a necessity, obviously. If you have a lot of the ambient lighting powders already, you probably do not need this one. If you don't already own a few of the ambient lighting powders, blushes, highlights, and everything, and you want one kit that gives you a nice selection of everything, then pick up one of these. It's almost globally out of stock. There are very few places that still have this, and Tang Singapore is one of the few. Well, I think it's the only place left in Asia that still has this. But if you miss this, the Ambient Edit 4 is coming out mid-November in Singapore as well. The one with the gorgeous pink case, and you can grab that when it's out as well. My number one, number one recommendation after trying everything here is Vanish Foundation Stick. This is amazing. I'm just beating myself up because I haven't tried it. It's been out for so long and I just never tried it. Okay, it's now about four or five hours since I first applied the foundation and I just want to do a quick check-in so you can see how it's worn. There's a lot of glow all around, I have to say. Well, this is not an all-absorbent formula, even though it sort of sets to a second powdery matte finish. But, well, nothing is smudging or coming off. I'm not sure if it's apparent on camera, but it did oxidize a tiny bit. So now my face is very slightly deeper than my neck. So my suggestion is if you either have oily skin or you live in a very hot, humid place where you're likely to be sweating over the day, don't go with your exact match. Other than the slight oxidation, it stayed pretty perfect looking. I mean, I have a little bit of shine, but it doesn't feel like my makeup is breaking down. My foundation still looks perfect once I blot it away. Now, this is not an oil control formula, so you will shine. If you have very oily skin, you need a mattifying primer, you need powder, you probably need to blot during the day just to keep your makeup fresh. Around my eyes, where I sort of used the stick, the vanish stick, as concealer, it stayed very perfect. So there are no creases, you know, those annoying little lines where powder or foundation is gathering. This doesn't do that. At the very most, it fades a little in the inner corners, so the coverage goes away a bit. Other than that, it looks perfect. If you want a stick foundation that you can use on the go, that is going to look like skin, and has not a lot of texture up close, this is perfect. Even if you get up close and personal with someone, it's not actually very visible that you have a layer of foundation on the skin. Then again, I apply just a few dots and buffed it out. So if you're going to be drawing in wall paint stripes, you might get a different experience. As for the Ambient Edit Unlocked Palette, I would say go with a light hand if you have paler skin. I am not particularly pale, I'm sort of a 
light, lightish medium. I found just a light touch of bronzer was a bit too much. This is a little bit too much for me. I would probably use this only for contouring if you're NC25 and paler. And of course this works if you just want to bronze all over, but you may need to go down your neck. I just find it um, a little bit too intense or a little bit too orange for pale skins. So in conclusion, I would go for a slightly, slightly paler shade of the Vanish Stick Foundation, which I actually did. I went and bought Bisque instead of Buff, which I was matched to yesterday. Buff looks fine in artificial light, but in the daylight when you're walking out, any little bit of oxidation or mismatching tones becomes very obvious. I wouldn't consider this a long wear foundation by any means. I can imagine that by hour 6, hour 10, it's going to start breaking down because it's a stick foundation, you know. It's not formulated to hold that amount of sweat and oil. That being said, you get the portability, you get the flexibility, you get the convenience of a stick. So you kind of have to, you know, weigh your options and decide which is a priority for you. I am still very impressed by this formula. I love the finish. I love how it sits around fine lines. It is a stick foundation that I would recommend for more mature skins as well. It can look like you're not getting a lot of product in one tube because, well, there just isn't a lot of it there. You get 7.2 grams, but a tiny, tiny, tiny bit goes a long way. I cannot stress this enough. A tiny bit goes a long way. Just do a few short strokes in each area of your face, blend it out, and then check if you need any more coverage. If you go in with too much right from the start, you're basically blending and moving everything around and moving the coverage. I would call this a perfect staycation foundation. You want to get ready and go, but you want to look flawless. And you want your skin to look like skin up close. It's effective, but it's discreet. So I do recommend this. I do recommend you at least try it out. It may not suit all skin types. I also suggest that you apply a few shades that might be possible matches and then let them sit for a while. And then walk around for maybe half an hour to let it oxidize on your skin or to check if it does oxidize on you before you settle on a shape. Anyway, I hope all this was useful. I know I'm really, really late to the party. This has been out for so long. I've been seeing it used since last year. Just never felt the urge to go try it out. And I don't know what I was waiting for. If you have any suggestions about what sort of video you'd like me to do next, just leave all your comments and suggestions below. I will see you in the next one.